So guys, we have covered two terminal operations. One was count. The count was giving me the the number of data sets present, uh, and after the mapping of this RDD into their string length. In the second unit test case, we did collect, and which will give give me the list of integers. That list will containing the list of all those uh, string length size. And now let's do the same thing with the another map reduce method. In the map reduce method, the very first one action that aggregate the elements of the data set using a function which takes two arguments and returns one. The function should be commutative and associative so that it can be computed directly in parallel. I think we did uh, this reduce in details in the previous uh, chapter, chapter six, where we did dive into reduce, fold, and aggregate methods. So let's try to use the same here. I will just copy this test case and this using RDD map reduce. Okay, using reduce. Okay. Now the only difference that we are going to do is that instead of this map collect, uh, I will change it because now we have got this new RDD, and this new RDD would be having each of the data element in that would be containing the length, which is an integer. So for that, I will call one more map method over here, and I will treat each of the individual element as one as count of one and then i will do a reduce on long sum okay and this will be returning me the str length of total count and then i can remove the size method okay guys let me control alt l and here i will change it to reduce okay Let's revise what I have done. Okay, so as you can see that there is a small annotation which is created here by IntelliJ. So once we create this my RDD dot map, once we call this map method for the string length, it will create a new RDD uh, because RDDs are immutable. So it will create a new RDD, and this new RDD would be containing uh, the length of each of the of the strings that was there in the original data. And after that, we again call this map method. So it means that for each of the elements here, we just count it as one. So suppose if there are like 10 elements uh, in this uh, Java RDD of integer of the length, now each element, each data element would be mapped to only a constant number, which is one. Which means that once we call reduce, it would be uh, summing up all these numbers. So if you do one plus one plus one, it would be giving me the actual count of the data set. So this is what we are doing. Again, let's revise this. We are good mapping it to an integer with length, and we are mapping each of the element to one, and then we are reducing by calling the sum on sum of each, which will give me the actual count of the data set. This is exactly same as what we are doing in our first unit test, where we are using count. So count was just doing the same thing; it was counting all the elements, but we are doing do, uh, doing a work around here. After calling map, we are just transforming it each data element to one and then summing it up. So this was the same exactly as count, and then we uh, assert that it should be exactly same as hundred thousand, which is the size of this data. Now let's run this. I expect that this should be uh, working fine as uh, we have done for count. But if we are just going to count, uh, I think we can directly call call the count method, which is already available instead of doing this workaround of having mapping and reducing. Let it run. So it completed its runs. It just took two to three milliseconds. Okay, so guys, this was all about the mapping test. So let's revise the whole uh, the whole unit test that we created our first uh, Spark one object uh, with the master as local star, which means that it will take all those four CPU cores I have in my laptop, and then we created this data where we will calling all those mapping uh, transformation me methods. We initialize this data using before all. We used random string utils, random ASCII method to generate those random strings of length zero to nine, because uh, we are passing this nesting as ten, which means that ten is exclusive. It starts from zero inclusive to nine, so that would be created, and then it, our data is ready with uh, hundred thousand of records in that. And after that, we uh, call various map methods here, but because maps are actually narrow transformations. And they are lazy in nature. They need a terminal operation, which is should be an action, to uh, to actually evaluate. Uh, evaluate. So 
that's why in the first uh, action that we took is what using the count method so once we map this uh, this rdd uh, of uh, string to uh, to the length of each of them and then call the count method then we will get that uh, this count method will be giving the total number of data sets in that new rdd which is created after this mapping similarly we created other test cases the only difference was that we are uh, instead of we are changing the actions or the terminal operations which were required after mapping so in the second case we used collect and the collect was returning me the list of integers we could we could actually see that uh, what is the data new rdd looking like uh, in the terms of array form or an array list form and similarly we did the same thing for using the map reduce method we actually so work around it's actually doing the same thing that what we have done in the first uh, count method but here we are just uh, mapping it uh, to a new rdd and then again mapping it by by just treating each element as one a constant one and then summing it up so this is the, uh, the same result that we got uh, with that, that the new rdd that is created for each of the mappings here the mapping operation is still same for each of them and only the actions have been taken uh, is been different but the result is same that we are able to uh, assert that the final the new rdd which is created it has got the same length as the data size so guys this was all about transformation for mapping in the next video we will do learn more about flat map so see you all in the next video